Hey there everybody, this is Mystic Fish and welcome to our Factorio series on building a cellular megabase. This is episode 22 if you can believe it uh, and we still don't even have a fully functional megabase but uh, we are working on it. Last episode, uh, past Mystic Fish managed to get the science cell uh, fully constructed and up and running but we discovered that we had some major power problems. So. That is what we are going to try to address in this episode, or at least we're going to start start addressing it. Uh, what I have done off camera in between episodes is I did apply our handy dandy sell off uh, blueprint here uh, to this constant combinator to turn the sell off. And that mostly worked like a charm. Uh, we stopped requesting resources in here. Uh, the builder train is prevented from going out, not that we have anywhere for it to go anyway, but um, but then because we stopped shipping resources in, then everything eventually quieted down. Um, I did notice we did, uh, we did actually have previously an extra red wire connecting these two train signals that was also disabling this signal when we turned a cell off. And it turns out this one is extraneous because we're directly controlling this signal here we are adding a C to our station network here, which is basically putting all of the limits, or a, uh, yeah, it's putting all the limits to zero because of this guy. Um, and so that stops any additional trains. But, but what I found was that any trains that were already scheduled to come in were getting stuck here because uh, this train signal, rail signal, was turning red, and then the chain signal was looking ahead, and this was also red. So. The, the train that came in here couldn't leave. So uh, I took that off and then the remaining resource trains that were scheduled to come in left and then no new ones came in and everything quieted down. So, okay, let's, uh, let's take a look here at our electricity. So uh, I'm gonna look back uh, sort of quite a bit uh, here into, this is the range that we're really uh, mainly concerned with here. And Maybe hard to see, but uh, but you can see that the um, that our uh, there's there's a steady growth um, in our uh, resource usage or sorry electricity usage by RoboPorts, um, even to the point of like super spiking up here, and uh, and so I think that uh, that is primarily logistics robots charging, I believe. So um, so that contributed to our our death spiral here. So. Uh, we don't want that, um, and that's the main thing that we want to fix, I think. Um, oh, I should mention on the power front, um, after I turned the cell off, I did go and um, I added five more solar cells, so we got a little more headroom. But, uh, but let's see, so I think this is mostly about, you know, if we look at this, this is at 1,500 logistics robots, and I think that is really where the power drain is coming here. And so... Uh, there are, I believe, three main sources of inefficiencies here. So the first one is that uh, when a resource train comes in, one of the things that I was noticing is that the logistics bots were all uh, queuing and waiting to charge around the handful of robo ports that we had up in this area. Um, and that just means we have uh, more logistics bots busy than we need to, right? Uh, it's okay for logistics bots to be in a RoboPort, or actively charging, or flying and going somewhere, but sitting around waiting to charge is is basically wasted work. And so, uh, I think the big I think this is really if we look at some of our other cells, we have a nice string of RoboPorts um, up close to the uh, resource drop off zone. And so, I think that is one of the issues is that we don't have enough RoboPorts up close to the resource drop-off. Now, uh, unfortunately, we're going to, I think this is gonna mean that we're gonna need to really rearrange a lot of the stuff that's in here and move stuff around. Um, but as we'll see, like the other two sources of inefficiency, I think um, at least one of those also lends them to sort of laying things out differently. So, uh, and that is that uh, the way that we have things laid out here uh, means that bots have to do a lot of traveling for some very high volume items. In particular, uh, if we look at the plastic production is way down here and the stuff that needs it is pretty far away, right? It's, it's all of the LDSs up here 
and the red circuit's way over here. So, um, so the bots are really gonna have, and those, you know, it is pretty high volume, right? It's one of the highest volume materials. Um, if we if we go and look uh, here, 1.6K, that's <clears throat> significantly higher than almost anything other than plates um, and copper cables. So, uh, so that is a, uh, and, and the resource, or sorry, the electricity usage of bots is related to how far they fly. Um, and so the longer they have to fly, uh, the more electricity that we're going to end up using. And so I think part of the problem here is that uh, we don't have things laid out in a way that minimizes flight distance uh, in most of the time. Uh, and I think related to that, uh, the other thing that we have is, you know, we've really concentrated, right, all of the red circuits are here close to each other. Um, and, and so they they have to fly sort of everywhere red circuits might be needed, right? They have to go there. But but we're all, we, I mean, these are being fed by logistics bots anyway. They could be sort of anywhere. So, so again, I think we want to start to think about how we can lay things out in a way that we can uh, minimize flight distance for the resources. And then uh, I think the other, I think if we look at things a little more carefully, you know, we've, we had some good success with the direct insertion stuff in things like the, uh, the green circuit build here. But, uh, but I think we can take that a little further and then that clearly just reduces the number of logistics spots uh, we will end up needing. Uh, and then finally, the other thing that I was noticing is, you know, especially for some of these, um, you know, the furnaces, these output inserters were pretty busy and, you know, and dropping off, you know, maybe, you know, maybe even just one or two plates at a time. And for things that were bottlenecked on, that meant that our the, the bots that were coming up were only able to pick up one or two things you know out of the boxes or out of the chests when they'd really like to be able to pick up four right we've got a cargo capacity plus three so each bot can carry four and they'll try to pick up four if it's available so i think the other thing that we're going to end up doing is i think uh, we're going to end up doing inserter clocking uh in order to make sure which is uh, we'll, we'll explain that when we get to it, uh, but but it's a way to use the circuit network to make sure that when this stack inserter swings to empty this, um, it actually is swinging with a full stack. So the general idea is you wait until there's, say, 12 plates in here, and then you let the inserter swing, and then it moves all 12 at once. And so that increases the likelihood that when a bot comes to pick stuff up out of here, it's able to grab all four things that its capacity will allow for. And then you know, that just means that we're being more efficient with the, the logistics robots that are in flight. So um, all that being said, uh, I think we're not going to start with the with the clocking. Uh, that may be a problem for future Mystic Fish, although that's going to be fun when we get to it. I'm excited to, to get into that and explain how that works. But uh, I do think we're going to have to just now that we've got a clear picture of what things are, are kind of important with this then I think we're really just gonna have to relay a bunch of this stuff out. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a deconstruction planner and I'm gonna deconstruct everything that is not a power pole of some sort and not a roboport. Um, and then this way uh, the construction bots can actually pick it all up. And I think we're actually just gonna do this. We're just gonna pick all of this stuff up. Um, I guess the question is how far down do we want to go into the oil processing? I do think we're gonna move that stuff around. So yeah, you know, let's get rid let's just let's just do it. Let's just get rid of almost all of this stuff. Uh up to here. Okay. Fine deconstruct that that'll deconstruct most of it we'll come back and uh, pick it up later but for right now what we're gonna do is we're going to go into the blueprints and start figuring out how to set them back up again so stay tuned okay we are back um, and where in the heck are we you may ask so uh, I just learned about a pretty cool mod called the blueprint designer lab and uh, that gives us, well, here, I'll show you. Uh, it gives us a little switch up here that we can use to pop out of the game. And uh, while the game actually runs in the background, we can actually see the uh, stuff is, uh, is working down there. It puts us in this 
Uh, I heard someone describe this as an alternate dimension. So uh, where we kind of get some creative mode stuff and uh, we can use that to, um, to play around with our blueprints. So um, I can take our blueprint of our science cell here um, and then I can uh, connect it to power. And then uh, there's, no, there's no character, right? I'm not running around here. Um, and so uh, what we can do here is um, we, can just, uh, we can just do the same kind of delete thing that I just did uh, up above. Uh, let's come down this far and let's get these out of here. And I guess we can uh, remove some things a little more carefully here. Uh, like this, and like this. Um, one of the things I'm thinking is because, you know, we may want to move the, for example, the, where is the plastic? The plastic is down here. We may want to move this out into the, uh, the main sort of construction area. So, um, so we may end up rearranging some of this stuff here, but let's make a nice big space here. Uh, let's get rid of these guys just for right now. Um, I think what I will do is I will put an extra substation up here. And then I will, so one of the nice things while we're in this mode, uh, we can kind of create as much of whatever we want. Uh, and so that is super handy for um, just um, connecting stuff around. Um, and not worrying about the good, like one of the downsides of working with the ghosts is that uh, we can't really, you know, we missed a couple times when we didn't have power to stuff. So, um, so that way we don't have to worry about that. Okay, so do you have power? You have power. Okay, the, the power is just not getting down here. So maybe we can, we can fix most of that uh, like so. Um, and then, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll wait to sort of take a look at that. Okay. So uh, the question is, how close can we get? Um, I think we can get this close. This substation is part of our stem cell blueprint, so can't really get rid of that. Um, hey, how about this for like fast module production? Look at that. Man, I wish we could produce stuff in the <laughs> modules in the base that fast. Um, okay, then we're going to come as far this way as we can. I think we want to orient things this direction. Oh, right. Why is that? Because we need to do this. Um, and I think extend all those RoboPorts down that way. Um, OK. So um, I think then we need to slide these guys a little further this way. Um, can we? Uh, if we slid down, we could get one more, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, so then we get all the modules in there, and then we need to make another row. One, two, one, two, three. Um, so that gives us room for our alternating machines for direct insertion. Um, and then it looks like we can come a little further this way. All right, we're sort of off by a little, but that is okay, I think. All right, so now what are we going to do? Um, I think here's what here's the way that I want to do this. Um, let's make a new factory plan called Red Science. Let's get the Red Science in here at 100 science per minute. Uh, let's do matrix. Okay. So, uh, whoops, that's not right because we don't have the right uh, defaults in place. Um, preferences, we need this guy set to speed modules. Uh, these all look fine. Okay, so let's try that again. All right, there we go. All right, all the speed modules. Okay, so um, it looks like we need, this is an annoying number of assembling machines that we need, 1.08. Uh, would be really nice if we could figure, I wonder if we put some extra speed modules in this guy. Um, okay, 0 0.97. Okay, good. That means that we can get away with just one red science. 
Um, so that that's good stuff. Okay. Um, so then um, I think what we want is, uh, let's see, we need some electric furnaces and we need some assembly machine threes. So I think what we want is something like um, the iron furnace going direct into the gears, going direct into the red science, and then the copper furnace coming into the red science from the other direction. So uh, the question is, if we slide this stuff down, um, let's see, the red science we know has to be at least here. Um, because uh, it needs access to the eight beacons, right? Like we need all the speed we can get because we're already planning to put um, two speed modules in there as well. Um, you're gonna get all these. Uh, let's see, um, we should probably represent the recipes here. So let's get, um, so one of the fun things about this uh, mod is that you can get an infinity chest and you can just stick stuff in here like say um, I would like there to be some ores available um, I guess we need these and we need these um, and then I can just get a stack of each of these into my inventory and that way we can mark the recipes just so we can see them so that's gonna be iron that's gonna be copper Okay, so uh, we need some extra, we need power here just so that we can check the, I guess you don't come out that far anyway. So, um, okay, so how many beacons, all right, this one has eight, so that's fine, right? Because um, we only need one furnace for copper. So that one's fine, that's fully beacon. So this one doesn't have the full complement, right? It's got four down here, but it's only got three up here, so that's actually seven. So if we take a look at this and change this to seven, um, yes, okay, it's still fine. Um, and then this one gets two beacons up here, right? Just these two, and then four down here. So that gets six. So is that enough um, if we change this to six? Um, and it is. Okay, great. So this is how we want this to look, I think. Um, let's see. I think this needs to get out of here. Um, oh, and let's see. Just for inserter purposes, I think it's fine. Um, 27 items per second times 60 is 1620. So as long as we're not up in the thousands per minute, um, here, single inserters will be fine. So um, I think that means that um, we can um, get these guys like this. Um, let's get a one of these. Um, you are going to go out. Um, Oh, but you need to be limited. Um, and in, and out, and in, and out, and in, and out. Okay, so that is going to look like that. Um, I guess if we slide this over, we can get a substation in there. And that looks nice, and I guess we want to get one down in this area too. And what else? I think we also want roboports um, on either side of our sort of direct insertion doohickey. Um, and then we are also going to need requester chests. Um, okay, this guy is doing, okay, it only gets 99 in per minute. So, um, so I think I think a single stack is probably fine for these guys uh, for right now. All right, you know what? Let's see. What you could actually, that's per second. How about per minute? 176 uh, per minute. So every 20 seconds, uh, you're consuming 
Oh, I don't know, like 60? So I think 50 is fine. I think having a request of 50 is fine because these aren't even running at full speed. Okay. Um, right and right. Okay, so I think that is going to be red science. Um, and the idea here is all we're requesting is or. Um, you know, we are, you know, in the, in the sort of proximity to or, right, as opposed to like further down here. Um, so I think that is good stuff. Uh, everything is direct insertion except for um, the ore coming in and the science going out. So I think that is, I think that's good stuff. Okay, let's move on to the next one um, so we can get an idea how this is working. So let's do green science. Uh, let's get you, you're gonna be at 100. Um, let's get everything in here. Okay, that's what you're going to look like. Now, all right, 1.3. So we won't be able to get everything everything together um, in here, but, um, but I, I suspect we can put the stuff for inserters together. Um, let's see if we can do that. What is that going to look like for inserters? Um, that is going to look like, um, I think, no, we need to offset you. Um, I think we're going to get copper, and then we're going to get copper coils, and then we're going to get green circuits. Um, and then I think we're going to get inserters. And then uh, let's see. We also need to get we need to get iron into some of this stuff here. So um, let's see. One way we could do that is why don't we put we could get an iron in here. Possibly, and then a uh, gears here. Um, and so now the question is, can we can we figure out um, how to do this? Uh, because this is requires some fancy footwork here. So um, so let's take a look at what's going into the inserters. Okay, 71.43 iron per minute. Um, okay, let's take a look at a red inserter. What's our throughput per minute here on this guy? Okay, this swings at 432 degrees per second. So 432 divided by 360 degrees. So that is 1.2 swings per second. Um, it, its stack size is three. So times three is that many items per second times 60 is 216 per minute. Okay, so, all right, good. At least for green circuits, um, everything that's here we can clearly move everything, except maybe the raw iron ore um, with uh, red inserters. And so I think that means that we can do some fun stuff like this, which is, I think we can get, I think we can do this. So you need to be limited. Um, okay, so that uh, that has iron going in uh, to the gears, and then iron going into the inserters, 
and then gears going into the inserters. And then we can also have, uh, we can also do the same, can we do the same thing here? Um, I think we can. And we can get um, then the iron going across to here and the green circuits going into there. Okay, that is, Oh, we don't, uh, we don't actually, okay, we don't actually have to do that um, because uh, we've got uh, this area down here we can use. Okay, so let's get you like this and then you'll go in here. And then, although actually if we did it the way that I did before, if we do it this way, which I don't know, I think it's kind of fun Um, then we can get a substation into here. And uh, then we can get this guy doing this. And we can get this guy doing this. And then we can get this request into there. You know, I'm gonna just make you know what, because uh, I'm going to be cutting and pasting these, so let's just make these the regular 176 that they're all doing um, when they're running full bore. So um, that is copper into there. We are going to put productivity modules in you and you and you and you and you. Uh, yeah. Oh, we do not have... Oh, oh, but we can, we can. Oh, wait, that was the one thing we said couldn't, wait, but how much iron is going in here? Um, three times 71. Um, Two thirteen. Um, what do you produce? 189. Oh, because I don't have That's on, okay, so it's actually not quite enough. It's actually not quite enough to, we're gonna need more iron uh, than this, even just for the inserters. Um, so I think that means, do we have enough? Oh no, because it's even even more. Right, it's 311. And actually most of it goes into the, right? This is 71.4, it's actually times four, right? Because the same amount goes into, I know it's less there. Okay, so it's 71.4. Oh, how much goes into the, it's like two thirds of the iron into here. So two thirds of plus, Two times one fifty three divided by uh, three. Uh, okay, so that's the gears plus uh, fifty one. So that is how much? Two twenty four. So it's just not quite enough. It's just not quite enough iron um, to do all of this. So I think if we took that off, then we can just move this here and we'll just get, we'll get iron in here. Um, and we'll put you in like that. Okay. All right. So that creates inserters. Oh, especially if we um, make some outputs. All right, so those are our outputs. Um, clearly we need to cover these inserters up there, so that's okay. All right, um, good, so that takes care of all the inserters. Um, let's duplicate this. One, two, one, two, three. All right, um, next up, what do we have here? Um, so we know we need, um, 
We now need iron, iron gear wheels and uh, transport belts. So I wonder, can we do that as follows? Can we get a single furnace? Um, can we get gears and gears? Um, I know this is more gears than we need, but I think this will allow us to do the direct insertion. Then can we do belts like this? And then green science. Whoops. Uh, something like that. Um, so let's see if that will work. Um, especially if we slide this stuff down. Um, okay, so this has access to four beacons. This one has access to eight. So the question is, uh, if we do six as an average, uh, yes, we still only need two. Okay, so that should be okay. So now the question is, can we make can we make this stuff uh, work here? Um, like this. Yeah, you have access to eight, so that's fine. Um, let's get beacons in here. Um, you're gonna make iron so we can see that. Okay, let's see. Um, so I think we can do um, this. Um, let's copy this guy so it gets the limit on it. And then I think we can do this and this. Well, let's see, let's get modules in here. Uh, there, there, and there, and there. Um, okay, that feeds the gears. Um, then I think we could do this same little trick here. Um, how much is, how much iron or how, much, how many gears are going into the belts? Okay, not very much per minute. Okay, so the red, the red inserters will work for us there. So we can do this and that. And then we can do this and this. Um, and then we can do a, um, we need a, an inserter for the, or sorry, a requester chest for the inserters, which we're producing up above, and then we need an output. Okay, um, very cool. So that means I think we can grab this stuff and flip it, and then we can grab this stuff and flip it. We can grab this stuff and flip it. Okay, can't really get much in the way of substations in here. So I think we're gonna weave some medium power poles through here, uh, right? Oh, and then we wanna put a RoboPort in here. Okay, so uh, let's see, who else needs power if we do that? These beacons down here need power. These need power. And uh, this needs power. Okay, uh, I think that is green science. How are we doing on time for the episode? Okay, I think that is, uh, this, is the, this is the way that we want to try to do things. So we're maximizing direct insertion, potentially at the expense of having some extra, um, some extra machines here, right? Like, like in theory, if we look at green science, we only need one thing making gears, but we're actually using three. Um, so we're gonna have to keep an eye on that to see if space is a premium. The, the trade-off here is um, that by using more space, it's going to require ultimately more beacons and modules, um, for, or speed modules especially. So, uh, so that means that it's, we're gonna be slower to build new science cells. On the other hand, I think it's really gonna cut down on the bot demand, and so that means that um, the the sort of ongoing electric 
consumption of the science cell should hopefully be a lot less. So uh, that is, uh, this is the style that I think we're going to work on here. Uh, I think that, um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a pass and try to fill in the rest of this stuff off camera uh, before we get to the next ex episode. And then we'll review what I laid out at the beginning of the next episode. Um, there's a lot of fiddly sort of checking that's going on in here. How do we lay things out, things of that sort. Um, I think it will just be make for a better viewing experience if we uh, just sort of look at that stuff once it's once I'm done with the fiddling around sort of stuff. Um, but uh, it's going to take me a little while to do that. So I don't know if people feel strongly in the comments that you would really rather see me do this um, live while you're watching and all the the figuring out. Um, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, so um, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments about, you know, do you want to see all these details or should I just get on with it and do it off camera and let's let's get on with the series here. So let me know. But I think we're going to I think we're at a good length for today. Uh, this is a good stopping point because I think uh, hopefully we've illustrated the the style that we're going for here um, in terms of laying things out. Um, and so, uh, so we're at a reasonable pivot point as far as like, do we continue doing this live together uh, on the uh, on the videos, or or you know, should I just get some of the homework done off camera? So um, I don't know. I, you know, I am going to make the blueprints available uh, once we get this science cell working. So um, so if that if your if your whole sort of question is like, oh no, but I want to see like how it got put together. You know, yeah, you can grab the blueprints and go see it afterwards. So, like, you, you needn't fear that. So, I think it's really just how interested are people in like watching me, you know, flail around in the factory planner and, and figure out how to lay stuff out like this. Um, so, uh, so I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Um, an interesting, uh, not a problem per se, but but an interesting question for future Mystic Fish. So. Um, so uh, we'll wrap things up here for right now. So as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And until then, bye.